805 Boxing News here with Fernando Vargas. Fernando, how did you how did you say you wanted to become a boxer when you were a little kid? How how did you decide you wanted to become a boxer? Well, I never, you know, the thing that happened was, you know, I know that God saved me at that point, right? Because at that age, I was 10 years old, already locked up in juvenile hall. Doing hundreds of hours for of community service, for um, for fighting, battling, death, and um, one day when I was better from school for fighting, you know, um, I saw amateur boxing on Jones Entertainment, Wingside Boxing Challenge. I was like, I was amazed. I saw kids my age. I was 10 years old at the time, and as young as eight years old, fighting for trophies. I couldn't even believe it. So I walked there the next day. It took me an hour to walk four miles every day as a 10 year old kid. I didn't care. I mean, uh, uh, about a month and a half, maybe two months later, I was fighting on the same channel at Jones Entertainment under, under Fernando, Fernando Chavez, my mother's maiden name. So, you know, and everybody to the school knew me as Fernando Chavez. You know, they were like, why did you change your name? And which I never changed my name. You know, my, my name was always Fernando Vargas, but my mother put me under a maiden name in school as under Fernando Chavez. So, when, when they said I had to use it, I hated it. I said, man, man, that's, that's, that's what those last names. That's, that's what he has last names. Yeah. My biological father, which was never in my life. I don't want to use this. I don't want to use it. And so when they said I had to, you know, I had to use what I was on my prison to pick, I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. Guess what? Marcus is going to support me. And I'm going to give it to my kids and my family and my wife to make it a name to be proud of. Mm. My, my, my father is, you know, my biological father out here is, you know, Next convict, next murder. Um, you know, you know I have drug addicts of uh, both sides of my family, so uh, it was tough, man. I mean, but I walked there to to Colonia every day. Not, I couldn't wait to be who I am. So, um, you know, next thing you know, when when um. When I was in the fight for the on um, Wings Have Boxing Challenge, I kind of my knees and I asked him, I said, I'm going to do this. I said, I'm going to do this. I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And so that's when my relationship with the Lord began. And I, and I asked God to be the way I am today. <clears throat> and, what, and when I can't walk places, when I'm when, when, when the fans are fanatical, I broke this to God. Because it's Angel Prayer. And how old were you when you meet, met Eduardo, Garcia, Big G, and how did that whole relationship start with you? Well, you know, um, originally, you know, um, my effort never never paid attention to me because I, I can understand there's a lot of kids that go to to to, to go train and go to be like Corona Boxing Gym. It was back then. Um, a lot of kids, you know, go and train, but they're not dedicated, of course. You know, they go, they sign up, and then they go away for a week, and then they don't go no more, or they go for a month, and they don't go no more. For me, I knew my life was gonna change. I knew my life was gonna change, and and um, I started, I started, um, you know, walking to the gym every day, and then one one day, my heavy saw me walking, you know, down. Um, down Rose Avenue, it's, you know, go through, through Colonia, all the way to, you know, to First Street, and then we went down Rose, and I lived behind General Nice High School, um, College of States, and so, you know, he saw me walking one day by myself, you know, and it was, you know, when when it, when it gets dark early, so it was like, oh, I was about maybe, five or six and it was nighttime already and he saw me with my bag and so it was Fernando and you know he saw me down roads and then he 
And then I said, Casa? ¿Dónde vives? Atrás de la Chano Anes High School. Y vienes caminando todos los días. Así es. Vamos. Déjame. Mira, súbete y tú te vas a dar un raite. Primero te voy a enseñar dónde vivo yo. Y luego, si quieres, te puedes, puedes caminar a, a mi casa que manda en la escuela. Y luego, de ahí ya te llevo a la gimnasia. That was like heaven to me. I was like, I walked to my office for 10, 15 minutes. I was happy. I went there every day and, and the rest is history. But it was in those, in, in, in those you know, car rides where, where my happy talked to me about life, about how a man should be, you know. Just, not just boxing, you know, but yeah. I learned a lot from him. I love him a lot. And once he took you under your, under his wing and he started showing you the boxing game, how was it training with also Robert and sparring with him every day and also sparring with him because he was a little older, a little stronger, a little faster? Well, you know, you know, the thing is, is at first, you know, when Garcia you know, started training me, he started, he, there was two other trainers, uh -huh. Martin Noriega and Mario Uribe. And there were some other guys that were on my, my, it was Peanut, and I don't remember the other guy. And so he goes, you know, hey, right now, you know, I want to see who, who, who's a better, who's a better trainer. And so, so you guys pick whichever one you guys want, and then, and then, um, you know, you guys need to go to the So, they one pick one, the other pick the other, and then I was the last one to stay. So my head would, you know, train me. And then that day, you know, um, I ended up, you know, you know, beating those guys up so bad that they never came back to each other. So, um, what was the question again? How was it training with Robert? Oh, uh, it was great. I, um, when Robert was I, I, young, also. Well, you know, Robert's like three years or four, three years, three years, three, three years older than me. So you know, at first, you know, Robert kicked my ass. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> you know, but but you know, I just you know. He said you would never give up. I he never said. give up. Never give up. You know and. You know, you know, there was, as a matter of fact, there was a guy named Saul Perez that was, at first, you know, the best guy at the gym, because my head was like this, Fernando, si quieres ser, si quieres ser chingón, tienes que ser el más mejor del gimnasio, primero, el más mejor de la ciudad, luego el más mejor del estado, luego, luego de todos Estados Unidos. And so, I started doing that when, when I started sparring with Saul Perez. And, you know, I started, you know, he kicked my ass a lot. And then I started getting a little bit better, little by little, getting better. One day, I remember, I beat his ass so bad that, you know, the salió sangre negra. And, my, and that was the last time we sparred with him. Um, but um, it was great always working with Robert, you know, because he was where, I, you know, I wanted to be where he was at. So, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, it's all friendly competition. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure that he wanted to be better than whoever else. And, yeah. and he ended up being that because Robert was badass. You know what I mean? And, you know, and still is badass because, you know, we're still the same people. Yeah. You know, he's badass, still gay, keep it down. You know, so, you know, I started working on Robert and he kicked my ass and, Little by little, you know, you still kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and was there a point where you realized and Big G realized that together you guys were something special and special things were going to happen? Well, look, when I won the youngest national championship at 16, um, I was the youngest in the tournament. And, um, uh, you know, my record can never be broken because now, you know, they changed it to 17 years old, or I think 18 years old, because kids are getting stopped. Yeah. And because they're getting hurt and you're fighting men. And, you know, their power, you know, you're, you're still a young kid, 16 years of age, and, you know, you can't deal with somebody that's strength. But, you know, I won that national tournament and with my Everett Garcia, 
you know, training me, you know, so I think that's when, and then and then, and then to represent the United States in, in Atlanta, you know, to be number one, 132, 139, and 147, so every time I moved up, it became number one in the United States, I worked hard, I'm telling you that I could have hurry up to be where I am today, so, you know, um, I think that's where my hip might have would have thought that, you know, that big, that, that, that big things were coming in. You know, I was, I was getting paid by the, by the United States Olympic I was, I was, look, I was giving my hip I'm always, I, my, I love, I love Garcia. I love the Garcia family. So I always, even though sometimes he wasn't training me, I was still take care of my hip Why? Because he was there from the beginning. And, and, and I remember when I was a kid that, you know, you know, took me into his home and, 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 and never charged me nothing, you know, so I love him around my heart. So I think then that's where he probably said, hey, you know what, we got something here. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize about you, is that you were a great amateur. You fought in the Pan Am Games, the Olympics, yep. and a lot of people don't uh, realize that you did those things. Yeah, well, you know, look, you know, uh, I had 105 amateur fights, five defeats. Um, uh, I was number one in 132, 139, and 147. Went to the Olympics. I beat two guys. I went to the Olympics with one of them is my brother, um, David Diaz. But you know, but 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 I just, I, like I'm telling you, it wasn't like from the first day I walked to the Colonia. I I, I pray to God to be who I am today. So. You know, isn't that, and, I don't, and that's not bad that you want to be something big and and, and, and people, everybody know your name. You know, when, when I was a kid, you know, I was always in trouble. So, you know, from that to, you know, I would say that my life is parallel to uh, La Bamba. I started off like Bob, but I ended up like Richard. But I could have been, I could have, I could have been, I could have been Bob for the rest of my life, but God saved me. That's why I served and after the Olympics, you turned pro. Did you realize, hey, you know what? I'm making it. This is coming true. Well, you know, when I, when I started breaking records and, 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 and like, um, being the, you know, represent the United States in, in Atlanta, you know, with, with what, a, what a team we had. You know, David Diaz, David Reed, and Tony Tarver, myself. Um, um, and of course, the the, the Pam for Pam King, the, the you know legend and the best ever, Floyd uh, Mayweather Jr. was on that team too. So um, you know, what was that? What was it? Oh, uh, when you fought your first fight, oh. the pro fight, did you think you, it was coming? You were you were gonna? Yeah, yeah, you know, I I, I knew that that. I couldn't, like I said, like I said, couldn't hurry up to be going up today, and, and, and we took on, I worked hard, I worked hard, and, and you know, we, we fought guys, you know, you know, with a lot of experience, and, yeah. and, 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 and we beat them, you know what I mean, because yeah. I worked hard, man, you know, that was something that I couldn't wait to hurry up to be. And, and after only 14 fights in 1998, you fight for a title against Yari Boy Tampa. You won the title, but what was sweeter, beating him up or taking his title? Both, because um, you know, my you know, I had already sparred Yari Boy Tampa, and I was already like you know, hot shot already in, in out of the limp, like going to the limp. He's already qualified for the limp, and said, yeah. you know. My heaven would take us, me, Robert, uh, to go spar in Atlanta because there was no competition for us in, in, uh, in, in Oxford. So we had to go to Atlanta to spar with the pros. So somebody, uh, they said, hey, you're going to put compass where I got Che, I think, in downtown Atlanta. I don't, I don't remember too well, but I think it was. Um, and then so. He said, oh, you already put is, is here. You want to spar with him? I said, you want to spar with him? You know? And um, when I spar with him, he played with me, man. He played with me. And it was, you know, 
you know, being ranked number one in the United States in three different weight classes, and then like you know, and, and, and whooping everybody, and then like to to be played with. Yeah. Oh man, I was I was so I was so broken. I'm so hurt. I remember being crying on the way back home. Crying on the way back home. I'm like, Garcia, Jefe, Garcia, este cabrón me la va a pagar. And I was crying. Pero por qué? Pero es campeón mundial, Fernando. No, 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 no. Te tienes que aguitar. Tienes que ponerte así. I'm like, no. Un día este cabrón me la va a pagar. So with 14 fights. He had 78 and 168 knockouts. Yeah, something like that. It's something like that, right? So I said, he goes, Fernando, my head goes, Fernando, look, look, look how, how, how great of a trainer my head is. Fernando, mira, este cabrón no es pieza para ti. Tú eres muy bien inteligente. Tienes un chingo de cosas. Tienes un buen ya, buenas combinaciones. Si, si lo dejas a la fuera, afuera, boxeando, le ganas. Si te quedas ahí a bajarte con él, te chinga. Ok, so we, 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 we worked on just boxing, boxing, boxing. And so, and so, when, check this out, then this is what, another thing he said, he goes, y esto es lo que va a pasar en la pelea. Vas a boxear, tanto, que te va a decir, párate a pelear conmigo. Y tú le vas a decir, no, soy muy inteligente. <laughs> and all that, that happened. And then he goes, pero espérate. Y también te va a decir, otra cosa, se va a rajar. Dice, ¿Por qué? ¿Cómo? ¿Por qué dice eso, jefe? Fernando, porque ya lo hizo una vez. La primera vez es la más difícil. And I'll never forget that. And guess what? He did. He quit. Se rajó, casi. Y, 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 y fue before, and he did it again, so. It's just stuff about my epic man. He's just so experienced. He's an, you know, amazing trainer to have made three world champions from scratch. There's a lot of trainers that, 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 that get fighters that are already made. Make them from scratch, like my epic yeah. You know what I mean? So, and, 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 you know, that's tough. So, you know, the, Almost that's impossible. That's almost impossible. <laughs> and you had some, you had some big wins in your career. Um, Raúl Marquez, Ike Corte, um, Wiki Wright. Um, I beat I beat five world champions and four beat me. Jorge Campos, Raúl Marquez, Wiki Wright, Ike Corte, Javier Casé. So, let's do this. Es mi hijo. The fans always show for that love. Muchas gracias. Nada, mucho gusto, eh. Bye bye. Sí, that's a blessing right there. Um, yeah. So, so what, what, what was the biggest win oh, of your okay, career? Okay, so no. I, I be five world champions. Yeah. 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 Okay, so then all world champions. Yeah. Right. So, and they can never say that they went home saying it was easy. You know, when people tell me, do you think that Trinidad fight was too early? You know, I say yes and I say no. Because when you're a champion, you want to fight the best. You don't care. I'm mean, like, exactly. you know, I'm a champion. I want to fight the best. Exactly. You know, you know I had just finished beating I Corte and I, and, and I called out Trinidad. So how am I going to look calling out Trinidad and then I take the fight? I called him and I said, Tito, creo que eres un gran campeón. Creo que... Quieres un, ex, un gran campeón. Quiero unificar los títulos contigo. Quiero que sepas que este mexicano no corre si pelea. So, when I fought him, you know, I give it all in the ring. I give it all. And that's what you have to do when you're, when you're a champion. You want to fight the best. And I'm, you know, people say, do you regret? 
you know, you, you, you know, jumping up so early. It was, I don't know if I regret it because, because, you know, people love love me for the fights that I gave them. But you know, it, it, it made me who I am. And you know, but if somebody would have said, this is what I say to people. If somebody would have said, hey, Fernando, no, nobody's saying you can't beat this guy, but let's go milk these. Let's go milk for these guys for 10, 15 minutes on this side over here, and then we'll go get these big guys. I would have said, nah, I want to fight these big guys. <laughs> because, you know, you're a champion. You want to fight the best, man. That's what it is, man. And then you face probably the biggest fight of your career against Oscar De La Hoya. Probably one of the biggest fights ever in boxing. Um, it was just electric to be at the Mandalay Bay for that fight. Um, what are your recollections going into the fight and the fight? You know, the, you know the fight. You know, um, you know, it was a fight that I think I was winning. You know, what I mean, definitely. You know, I was putting the pressure. You know, and then in the tenth round, I was stupid because it's protect yourself at all times. And so when the when the when the bell rang, I went like this. And I went like this, and he was coming with that left hook, and, and, and nothing bad about Oscar. Yeah, yeah. My fault. Just protect yourself at all times. And, and he hit me with the left hook that was hurt, that, that hurt me. And so I remember being in the corner. I remember being in the corner. I was hurt. Uh -huh. I was hurt. And and I remember saying to myself, "Man, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I can hold on to him." Or I could say, fuck it, let's go. But you know what? I said to myself, the smart thing would have been oh. to hold them because you're, you're, you're hurt. That way you can try to get some legs in you. Yeah. But you know what I said? I said, I don't want to give him the satisfaction of saying that I held on to him. I said, fuck it, let's go. So I said, I was hurt. That's it. And he come with a left hook and knocked me down. And I said, well, I don't know. I, and like I said, I said, I can hold him, but I said, no, let's go, fuck it. Yeah. And do you think that having all those fights, all those big fights, it was just too much too quick, or it was just something that it was meant to be that way? Well, you know, like I said, you know, I wanted, I, I'm a champion too, you fight the best. And so, you know, I, I was, you know, I had 14 fights of how you to break out. I don't, I don't think I even had, I think I was 21, 20, 21, 22, 22 maybe, when I fought um, I Quartier. So, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're a champion, you want to fight the best. And, and, and so I, I don't regret, I don't regret that, but, you know, you know, they, if, if they would have, you know, maybe took it slower, but when you're a champion, you, I, I started calling out people. I called out. You know, I, 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 I called out I Quartet, you know, you know, I don't know, Raul Marquez got on the line after I just did one, one title defense and then Raul Marquez got on, on a conference call um, and he says, why are you finding these bombs? Find me. You did a taxi cab driver. I go, all right, motherfucker, you're next. And, he went, and, 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 and I said, watch, you're going to get it too. And so. You know, and he's a former world champion. Yeah. So it's when you when you're at when you're at that age, you want to fight the best because that's what you you know you're a young bull, you're a young champion. Yeah. And like some of me, Carlos, you know, maybe we want we want to fight the best. And you have boxing skills. You're one of the toughest guys that ever fought. You would definitely have been a world champion. But would you have made it this far without the Big G, without the Garcia? Never, 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 never. You know, my FA is, um, is you know, a man. You know what I mean? And uh, I have a lot of respect for for Rob, for for, for, for for my FA Garcia. You know. Um, my, uh, you know, Robert learned from the best, and who's that? It's that. Yeah. And luckily, I was able to have him with my Garcia in my life, and to this day, I still have a relationship with him. I, I know I wouldn't have been who I am today if it wasn't for him. You know, he took me to his home, 
And when I was a kid, and you know, when they kicked me out of my house, it was kind of like a kid, I got to for them. And I never forget, I never forget that. That's why, to this day, I, I still talk to my jefe a lot when I need advice with their life, you know, with me and my kids, or, you know, or, or boxing, of course, you know what I mean? But I wouldn't have done it without them. And now you're a trainer. And you have some great boxers underneath you, but do you love training just as much as you love boxing? It's a, and Robert can tell you, it's the, it's the second best thing to being in the ring. You know why? Because when we're fighting, we can enjoy the, the, the you know, go out and, and like, go, out, go get something to eat, go get something to fill your stomach. You know, um, you don't get to enjoy the places you go to, but as a trainer, you, you do. You're like man, I'm gonna go to Atlantic City. Or I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Dallas. Like I'm gonna go with Dallas to, to, to with with uh, with Gabe, you know, on uh, September 17th. And I'm gonna be. I could eat whatever I want. And, you know, I got fat for a while, but then I a lot, I lost a lot of weight, more weight because I was tired of getting fat. But you know, I get to enjoy it more because you get to 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 live. You know, the experience of your fighter. Yeah. Even though I already lived them, but not not having to lose the weight. <laughs> yeah. And do you think it's harder to become a world champion or to make a world champion? No, man. It's uh, it's both. Both both are equally hard. Look how many boxers there are in the world. How many of them can say they were world champions? Look how many look, look how many trainers there are. There. How many of those can say they, they made world champions? So equally both the same, I think. And um, you know, I, I'm gonna take pride in, and uh, hopefully, you know, in the name of Jesus, we, we, we make our first. I make my first world champion soon. So we'll see what happens. Well, you know, after this fight, we got, um, you know, we, we got uh, uh, William and Rowe that we're fighting in yeah. um, and, and, uh, and, uh, Dallas and. And uh, we'll see what happens after that. You know what I mean? Hopefully we get a, a big name and maybe a title fight. We'll see. And when you're outside of the ring and you have your boxer inside the ring and you're giving them instructions, do you ever think back when Big G was giving you the instructions and you were in the ring? Do you ever think back and give your fighters those same instructions? Or? I, I, my help always sent us. Primero inteligente, luego valiente. Because he knew where we are. So he knows that, you know, if they hit us, we're going to get pissed off. Let's go. No, but, because, you know, before I used to get mad, like, they come with a shot up, like, well, hell no, you know what I mean? And, but then you lose your head. So my head always sent us, Fernando, Fernando Inteligente, luego Valiente. So that's the same way that I send, that I send uh, uh, my fighters. Primero Inteligente, luego Valiente. Because, hey, you know, tenemos la sangre caliente and, we're, we're trying to get back at them, and, and when you lose your head, that's when you lost the fight. And if your jefe was sitting down right here, right here next to us right now, what would you say to him? Oh, que lo quiero con todo mi alma, que lo quiero un chingo, and he knows that. I always tell him, you know, I call him on his, I call him regularly. You know I mean, there's nothing that, you know, I just personally had some. You know, personal things happened with one of the members of my family, you know, and I, and I had a I had a talk to him about what should I do. You know what I mean? And because I don't have a father, you know, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have, my my dad didn't give a damn about me. He let me live my life. He let he, he, he you know he let the he let drugs and and, and, the, and the street life consume me. And so he didn't give a damn about me. I had to grow up with a naked stepfather. I had to grow up, you know, just just bad. I didn't have no support at my house for, you know, I had a walk to Colombia. Yeah. You think I got rights? Hell no. I look, I would even catch cases. Like like uh, like one day when I was I was uh, when I was going up the subject a little bit, but I would even catch you know cases. Um, you know, one day when I was, you know, I had a stick for detention at school. Um, I was late to go to the gym, so I had to walk four miles. I go, man, I saw this kid at the park. I said, hey man, let me buy your bike. He goes, no, let me buy your bike. I promise I'll bring it back. No, man. 
I took this bike, I pushed him off the bike, and I went. And guess who was waiting for me at the house uh, when I got home? The cops. I picked up a case. So I never had no support. I did everything by myself. I thank God for it. For, for, for because it's him that gave me the blessings that I had. So, you know, my effort is a blessing because I never had a father and God gave me my effort. I, I know stories about, about my effort that, that Robert does too, but you know, what an, what an amazing gift it is for Robert to be, to know that that's his dad. And it's my dad too. But, but it's, it's, you know, of course. You well, know. you know, I'll tell you what, every time I talk to Robert, he says you're family. Yeah, so, uh, well, he, they, they are, they're family to me. You know, I love them, they love my eyes. You know, I talk to Robert not too long ago, but hey, man, you know, make it Hopefully, I'm, uh, I could be like you one day because, hey, come on, man. What he's done in this part of boxing, you get, uh, to make, I think, how many, eight, eight more champions or nine? Nine. Come on. Come on. But you know, you have to get yourself a good team, and I'm starting to get a good team together. Yeah. You know? That's what he said. Uh, he said he has a great team. Yeah. You need to get a good team together. And, and uh, you know, if it wasn't for for our happy, for. for or Garcia, you know, he, I don't think none of us would be where we're at today. Yeah, and as a little boy growing up in Oxnard, you know, living a tough life, people have dreams, but could you have dreamed this? You know, the fame, money, the family that you have, all of this life as a little boy that you, you dream, but did you really think that this could come true for you? You know, God knows your heart. And God knew on my heart that, you know, I wanted to be, you know, everybody knows me. That's one bad. That's one bad. And I love that, you know what I mean? You know, whenever I'm around, people show love and they want to take pictures. And, and um, you know, I knew that God, I had faith. The Bible says you can't please God without faith. So I had faith in God from the beginning. So I know He would make me who I am today. So, you know, could I have dreamed it? You know, when I can't, like I said, like, you know, when, I'm, when I was a kid, I passed. God would make me like my guy, Rocky Rocky, would make me like Jesus or Travis. When I can't walk places, and, and it's, it's, it's fanatical about this to God because, you know, it's answer prayer. And so, you know, I couldn't, we couldn't have done it without my, without, without him and that shit. And is there anything you want to say to your family, your fans, your friends, any last things? Well, you know, thank you for all the support, um, for, for, for also my reality show that you guys are supporting too. Me and my family will be back. Um, um, follow, follow our network at Tuyo TV. At under at under at do you underscore TV and um so you know we're gonna be back and thank you for all the support thank you Oxnard I remember when I was a kid nobody knew where Oxnard was I mean the, I would wear a beanie on my head and said Oxnard when I go to tournaments I'd be like where is that I never heard of that is that in California well, yeah it's in California so now when you know I see our name you know when you see. Los Angeles, Los Angeles, um, uh, Oxnard, Ventura, Santa Barbara, you know what I mean? So, it's a blessing, you know what I mean? But, um, never think that you can never stop, never stop believing in God, and He'll give you the desires of your heart. And you heard it here from Fernando Vargas, 805 Boxing News. Where can we follow you at, Fernando? Uh, you can follow me at my, um, on my Twitter at underscore Fernando Vargas and also on my Instagram at underscore Fernando Vargas the same and um, Google me on uh, Facebook Fernando Vargas and I, I, I'm the first page that comes up. All right. Thank you. Yeah.